Greetings guys, John here, and I'm here uh, with a another video. This time I'm going to explain, per the request of a viewer, uh, how I would personally, or how I personally, photo bash characters, do a character design maybe. And uh, I'm starting here with some photo reference. This is actually a photo of myself. And uh, in, I think taking your own photos uh, for a lot of this kind of stuff is kind of a must um, even if you're I mean you should be taking your own photos and photo reference even if you don't plan on photo bashing but even um, especially if you are because it solves a lot of problems which is finding good photo reference because you can try and take the best possible photos you can and you know your camera phone's gonna take good enough pictures to get the job done at least for me it does because I, I tend to have a a more end up with a kind of more half photo texture half more painterly look to my photo bashes but um, it's it's I think a must to to have your own uh, photo reference so I went in my garage I got my rifle and my kit and put it all on took some pictures in various poses this is the pose I liked the most and uh, decided to use this as a base. Now, you could take some photos you find online and you can oftentimes kind of uh, even bash parts together. Like, let's say, uh, I don't like the way my arm is, so I'm going to remove uh, the way the arm that currently is and maybe bash in some other random person's completely different arm that's more in a pose that I like. That is uh, completely possible, completely doable, and um, might get you the results that you need. And but I think taking your own photographs is really useful in this regard. Like I have all this gear. Uh, I'm a you know shooter and gun owner myself, so you know uh, owning I, I have the costume pretty much already. So it it makes uh, taking photos like this like why not? Uh, I I have I'll have the reference like already mostly there. Like yeah, most uh, most soldiers aren't going to be wearing like you know. Kelly green shirts and uh, slacks, but you know it's it doesn't matter. I'm going to be painting over the top of this and changing this to be quite a bit different than what it actually is. Um, that said, too, what I'm making here is I decided to make this into a futuristic sort of uh, soldier-looking guy. It's going to be like in a contained spacesuit, um, kind of more like realistic, futuristic, uh, not like uh, super crazy sci-fi, but like maybe. Maybe this guy can exist like 150, 200 years in the future, something like that. So that that's kind of been my my plan with this one as we go forward here. So uh, yeah, I I have this uh, image here that I, I took of myself, and um, I'm gonna use some elements that I that I got from another website, photobash.org. I highly suggest that you check out photobash.org or textures.com uh, a lot of these places you can get free well textures.com you can get free photo textures that can be used commercially as well as personally and uh, photobash.org you can go and download and pay for like a personal or studio license or anything like that whatever you know mode you kind of need in order to get some uh, photo bash stuff so I have this like uh, like NASA like air uh, space uh, sort of collection of photos that I purchased from photobash.org and uh, I, it came in extensive use here for this character design and so I'm just kinda the first step here and I don't show everything with this because this video would just be too long and I've already sped it up uh, two times speed and it gets kind of repetitive you don't need to see every every aspect of it but essentially I take the piece that I want maybe of something and I, I place it where I think it needs to go and I kind of paint out with masks and uh, paint back in oh my gosh these kids are going crazy outside paint back in with uh, like like this here I'm using the mask to kind of paint out the face to have it kind of in this hood part and I, I want the gun to be shown through here so I, I kind of just use bits and pieces of whatever I feel like I need and one tip I'll give that I think is kind of the key to uh, photo bashing, and I do use it a few times here, eventually you'll see on the gun and some, some bits of the costume as well, such as like the knee pads and stuff like that, 
is to use parts from like from things that you people wouldn't expect and using them in a different way. So like I use part of like a, an aircraft in order to make some knee pads and I use parts of like an aircraft landing gear to make uh, a more kind of futuristic looking barrel shroud and and uh, gun for for the character here. And obviously there's some things I, I use as they are intended to be, I guess, like this pieces of, of images of, of art from the, uh, the spacesuit, but um, having a mix of both kind of really helps you with uh, really trying to nail this down and, uh, and, and get it um, get it looking good. And, and to have it look unexpected, like it, it, there, there, that's the difference, I think. I think using photos in a creative way is the difference between looking kind of amateurish and uh, looking like a really solid, awesome piece of art. Not saying that like what I make here is incredibly amazing. I didn't do a thumbnail. I didn't do any of my normal sort of stuff. I kind of just dove right into it and kind of just discovered this image as I went. But using photos creatively, I think, is like one of the best ways to uh, to, uh, to to make a really unique photo bashed image. Whether you're doing a character design like this or you're doing an environment or a vehicle or whatever it is that you you're doing uh using the photos creatively and, and in ways that like if you told someone like oh you know his chest piece is made from uh a photo of a of a of an electrical car engine and i you know bashed it together and then did a paint over of it to make it look different like if people don't if people go oh wow that's what that's from that's cool like that i think you've done your, a good job it's, it's, it's not set in stone, but you get what I'm trying to say. Like you're you're using elements in ways they don't expect you to use elements, and uh, making something uh, kind of mundane out of interesting photographs. I think that's the key to to being successful at this technique. So this technique is obviously I've shown that it's possible in Clip Studio Paint. It's definitely easier in Photoshop. And uh, towards the end of this image, I do actually switch over to Photoshop because Photoshop just, as far as some filters and effects that I want to use on things when I photo bash, uh, it just has a better sort of suite of tools for that than Clip Studio Paint does. But Clip Studio Paint gets me about 95, 96, 97% of the way there. So if all you have is Clip Studio Paint and you want to be able to photo bash, it's, it's an obviously doable I'm doing it here and uh, I'm just taking pieces off of various images and kind of collaging them on uh, where I, I feel like I need them and where I think they would look good and you can see the colors like it looks really hideous at this point uh, colors don't match like the the plate carrier I'm wearing and the mag pouches are like a completely different color than the spacesuit and I'm gonna change that eventually um, I, I find that it's easier to change to a darker color, so I'm going to switch the spacesuit to a darker color. Then uh, try and lighten up the the plate carrier and and mag pouch and everything. But you'll you'll see that eventually. But I'm I'm trying to find uh, images, and and this just comes from experience. Like you just have to practice it. And this is what makes photo bashing, I think, a little more difficult. Yes, you are not creating this image f entirely from scratch. You're not drawing it. You're not. Um, you're not. Uh, you're not making an image 100% from your own imagination. It's it's coming from someplace else as well, um, because you're obviously putting photos into your painting or using photographs as a basis for your painting. But there still has to take some artistic judgment. There, there's some you have to have some knowledge of uh, how certain things will look and how. Um, what will look good, what will look bad, and it, in perspective, an anatomy, um, lighting, in order to make everything look good. Because uh, if you don't know what you're doing, people are going to be able to tell. It's not just, I think there's this misconception out there that photo bashing is easy, and, and I think some people that maybe haven't really tried it uh, don't really know how difficult it can be to make it look good. 
because there's there's some bad photo bashes that I've seen, and I've made some of them myself when I was learning. You're, you're gonna if you've never done this before and you want to learn how to do it, you're gonna make bad photo bashed images as well. But it's all just part of the learning process, and so you have to learn. Okay, this this photo is and this photo go together really well. Lighting is coming from the same spot. This photo is close but it's not exactly right so I'm gonna have to spend a lot more time doing a paint over over this section of the painting in order to make it match everything else uh, and and you can actually use photo te textures dump them in and like completely change lighting if you so wish it's a lot more work but uh, it's it's definitely possible doable and sometimes that's just what you have to do so here I am using um, the the uh, hue saturation sliders here to kind of change the tone of various parts of the space what will be the spacesuit and uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to match as best as I can the spacesuit to the coyote tan plate carrier that I'm wearing um, to get, I, I wanted to match it to that because that's obviously a more military color than, say, just white, and um, and so that's why I went with with trying to change the color from white to a closer color to the uh, coyote tan of my my plate carrier that I'm wearing. But this is where this is where Photoshop has Clip Studio Paint beat as far as photo bashing is concerned. Um, only because Photoshop has the color match tool and that allows me to for instance I, I could select an area of the plate carrier that has a good range of value and shadows and copy paste that to its own layer and then do a color match for the layer of the spacesuit that I'm working on and have the spacesuit match uh, perfectly almost based on how I do the sliders and adjustments and everything have it match uh, that layer that I copied and pasted and that just gives you a more uniform kind of uh, matching look to the whole image so here like it's not even close like I, I'm trying to I'm gonna use the plate carrier there so that I have more of that color there so I can visually match it but you're gonna see me constantly bringing up the hue and sli saturation sliders here in Clip Studio Paint and I really miss I really wish Clip Studio Paint had something like Color Match, but I understand it's more of a hardcore painting program. Like you're you're losing, in my opinion, the ability of some of the photo mani manipulation tools, which is what makes Photoshop really good at photo bashing. You're losing some of those photo man manipulation tools for uh, some really solid paint simulation. I think, cause, and that's where Clip Studio Paint like really excels. So you're, it it depends on and on what you're willing to trade it up for and I think the paint simulation the, the way the brushes work in Clip Studio Paint is like a really good balance between for instance uh, Corel Painter and Photoshop and I, I think the brushes actually feel better in this than they do in Photoshop in a lot of ways and in a uh, in, uh, Corel Painter uh, so at least for at least for my style, it might it may not work for your style, but I'm willing to make that trade up of losing some photo manipulation tools like color match in order to use, uh, in in order to to gain some other areas where I think Clip Studio Paint edges it out. One of the biggest that Clip Studio Paint edges out Adobe Photoshop is in, you know, you can buy the base version of Clip Studio Paint, which is plenty of powerful software for you to be a concept artist or illustrator and uh, pay 60 bucks for it 70 bucks for it I don't know they're always having sales with Clip Studio Paint and upgrading is like a couple hundred and you own the software like you you own it it's yours whereas I, I, I have mentioned before I have a really big issue with renting software so that's my issue with Photoshop if you want to have just Photoshop it's like 10 bucks a month and while that seems affordable on the surface like after six months, half a year of owning Photoshop, you you've purchased Clip Studio Paint already, pretty much. So that's just my my gripe of it. So here I am back at the color sliders, missing my color match tool, but trying to do the best I can to get it as close as possible. 
and there's ways you can try and, and do this. It just it causes more steps than just straight up color matching. Uh, you can do a layer above everything that is kind of like a unifying color layer, and then that will uh, uh, kind of unify all the colors together, kind of get rid of, rid of some irregularities. I'm just kind of kind of trying to stick with the color match tool. So. I got the upper half of the suit bashed in, kind of looking the way I want it to look, and I think from here on out, I'm gonna, I, I try and bash in some elements from uh, another space suit for the legs, for the pant legs, and it just doesn't work. We'll see that in a minute here. So I end up just going with the pants that I'm wearing and, and trying to like beef them up a little bit. They end up being more painted than other parts, which kind of gives some incongruity or, or some disconnect between the upper half of, his, of the character's body and the lower half, but, you know, it is what it is, and um, I wanted to get this done in an afternoon, so I, I actually just finished doing this image today, and then, you know, uh, uh, recording the, the narration for it now, so, yeah, here, here I am trying to get these, I was going to use these pant legs to, uh, bash in and they just don't work. Uh, I, they're not in the right perspective and trying to bend them into the right perspective they have that red band on there and if the red band wasn't there it wouldn't matter but they the, the fact that those red bands are there kind of throw off perspective and I didn't feel like painting that out and if I was going to be painting that out and manipulating the the image that much I just felt like I should just stick with the pants that I was wearing in the reference photo um, they, I kind of like the slimmer look, and not necessarily into the big poofy uh, look there with the with the uh, pant legs, which you'll see. But but I make do. So yeah, just messing with the color sliders. Uh, I said color match earlier. It's it's color just you know hue saturation saturation sliders. Trying to just manipulate the three sliders: luminosity, saturation, and hue, until I feel like I can get something that looks like it's close. As you can see, I really struggle here with these pant legs, which is why I end up ditching them and just going for color changing or for using the heat saturation sliders on the pants that were worn in the reference original reference photo. And I think the slimmer look kind of gives it a little more futuristic look. So, you know, our, our current space suits, like, it's kind of like why uh, the SpaceX suits look a lot cooler than, like, uh, than like a normal spacesuit because they're slimmer and so it kind of feels like a little more futuristic. Um, I, I kind of was thinking about that but trying to think of like a, a little more of a grungy uh, military sort of look. But yeah, here I am struggling to uh, do this pant leg and I'm really frustrated as I'm recording this. My recording software is being really annoying as I'm trying to record this narration and just deciding to stop recording at random points and I don't know why. So I thought I was recording uh, for about 20 minutes to realize I wasn't recording, so that's annoying, but uh, I'll try and restate what I had said in those 20 minutes without uh, missing anything. And hopefully that doesn't occur, but um, yeah, as you can see, I skipped here ahead. I've added some grilly bits to the gun. It makes no sense, uh, but I just wanted to make it look less like an AR-15 and more like maybe some kind of weird, uh, junky, futuristic gun. Um, trying to keep with this sort of like... Uh, uh, dirty uh, utilitarian kind of future to it to this uh, this design so yeah there's just some like I think that's like an aircraft engine there uh, that that was the knee pad that was part of the barrel shroud that I'm I'm using here so and just having like bits of wire and electronics like I didn't really care if this looked like a real gun I know I have a tutorial on like designing realistic firearms but at this point like I, I was just I'm just trying to demonstrate something and um, make it look cool and sometimes cool just does it just does trump you know uh, practicality or realistic look it just that's just the way it is it trumps that so uh, at this point, I'm just making these small adjustments. I got pretty much all of the photographic uh, texture bits that I want in there. So next comes the point of painting a lot of this in. And uh, I think this was the key takeaway that I had that I wanted to give you all from this is that 
deciding what parts to paint and what parts not to paint while is it's super key to being good at this technique and not saying I'm really really good at it but I it's so much of it is just like feel for me that describing exactly how I decide like this spot needs to be painted and this spot doesn't is I, I don't know how to describe that it's because it's just a gut feeling for me and so it's just something that you will have to learn you'll have to do by practice and trying to experiment for yourself and just developing an eye for it I wish I was a bit able to explain exactly my thought process and I just have never been analytical about it it's, it's always just been a gut feeling just based off of trying and trying and trying and just kind of naturally sort of absorbing what has worked and what hasn't worked um, I, I don't know I just kind of look at value and tone and just make judgment calls as I go and as I work my way around an image of like okay this this spot needs to be touched up and this spots okay um, and oftentimes as I'm painting if a spot looks like it's good then the area around it might get worked up and it's like oh I gotta go back and revisit this spot so it's it's all just like a learn as you go work as you go sort of thing and I don't know how to explain it any other way here I'm using the uh, flat oil brush it's a really awesome brush uh, it's uh, one of my favorites I uh, this brush the flat oil blend and um, the, my custom brush that I made out of the the default gouache brush and gouache blender I added a little texture to them they're like my go-to brushes within clip studio paint they just have like a really good feel to them um, they they have a really good texture at least these flat oil ones and you can just find them by downloading them on the um, materials marketplace I guess I don't know what you'd call it exactly on uh, clip studio paint but you can see they just give like a really nice feel and they actually blend really well with this uh, photo bash technique as far as like giving at least for me and my style and what I want to go for when I do this uh, like there's brush there's actual textured brush strokes all throughout the image which I think gives the image a little more flair so yeah I'm just gonna I'm just working I'm uh, trying to make everything just essentially feel unified I guess that's how I make that judgment call is I look at the area that I'm working on and like trying to unify everything be it with its light where the light source is coming from or uh, color or just the texture of something no my, my brush is there as a tool to to make that happen and so you can see how this is there's some quite a bit of painting involved in this still and you have to have an eye for uh, value and tone in order to make this look good I think um, is it easier than just painting this straight from scratch to a photorealistic sort of uh, illustration of course it's a lot easier than that but is it as easy as just slapping photos together and just you know doing it no I, I think it's a little more difficult and, and uh, nuanced and there's some there's some uh, fundamental skills that you still need to have in order to make this work so all things to keep in mind and again I'm sorry I can't explain it more clearly and more analytically but uh, you just gotta feel it you just gotta practice it and do it it's the best way to do it so um, I, I'm just kinda cleaning up the edges here kinda working and uh, uh, using the flat oil brush in order to just sort of unify everything uh, it's Let's see it's uh, kind of tedious at this point but I also kind of enjoy this part because this is where you're doing the finishing work at this point um, it's just again like I said unifying everything making sure the lighting is working adding little highlights where you feel like you need the highlights and ambient occlusion shadows where you think you need those 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 things those sorts of things those those ends of the spectrum ambient occlusion uh, parts and like little lines here and there that kind of show like two edges touch and make a shadow as well as highlights on on surfaces um, 
whether they're kind of a matte or glossy finish, depending on what the material is made out of, those those really help sell the image as far as looking like a total and complete painting. So those are all things that you should keep in mind. At this point, it's all pretty straightforward from here, so I kind of want to talk again about uh, what I my plan is as far as uh, my channel and some things that have, have changed that I'm doing. Um, so uh, I, my, uh, I've started a new website called uh, LieberArt.online. A link will be in the video description, usually always is. And I've changed up my subscribe star. So a lot of my art, including this one here, will be up for free uh, for use. You'll be able to download the PSDs for this too on my subscribe star page, so make sure you check that out if you want to see like my layers and, and how I, I did everything with this. That's oftentimes very helpful when you're looking at the image itself. And I think I've left the images broken apart as far as layers are concerned. So that should be very helpful. But uh, my subscribe star is gonna it's gonna be to support this channel still because a lot of this art will be used for my website LibreArt.online. And LibreArt.online is a place where I plan on posting any image that I post there, any piece of art that I make that I post there will be free to use. It will be in the Creative Commons attribution license, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it will be free to use. Meaning like if you have an RPG project or you just have like a project that needs some art assets and something that I have there will fit for that, you're free to use it. Uh, and I, I think all you have to do is give me credit with it in a reasonable way. Um, I, I don't think it can seem like I'm endorsing you. I don't know what the rules are regarding it. The whole point being is that uh, I'm very libertarian in my views, and I, I'm a firm believer in property rights, but I feel like intellectual property, the ability to own an intangible idea, is somewhat fishy to me, and so I'm trying to do an experiment to see that this can work, that you don't need, as a creator, you don't need intellectual property to be incentivized to be a creative, um, and that we can actually together make a lot of really cool stuff um, if if we don't try and control the actual tangible physical property of others which is what I feel uh, intellectual property does so uh, make sure you check that out libraart.com check out the subscribe star for my channel and that and that page if you appreciate that kind of work and my vision for that and uh, want to see you see value in that like if you have a project that needs art and uh, what not? All I ask is two dollars a month to support it, and uh, you end up um, supporting Libre Art and motivating me to keep keep making more art, posting it on there, and making it free to use for whatever project you want to use. So, yeah, the PSDs will be available for download on my Subscribe Star page for that. It, it's all linked together in my Subscribe Star page and LibreArt online. So make sure you check it out and. Uh, I think I'm just going to have some music playing for the rest of this video because it's pretty straightforward from this point, just uh, blending things together and matching colors and trying to make it look uh, good and painterly and uh, photorealistic at the same time too. I hope this video was enjoyable. Again, make sure you check out LibreArt.online and uh, as well as my uh, website or my subscribe star. Uh, subscribestar.com forward slash I think it's uh, Lieber hyphen art or Lieber, I don't know it'll be in the video description just look for it I'm tired right now uh, but anyways yeah make sure you check that out thank you for watching thank you for supporting make, if you have ideas for videos like this this is from a viewer that wanted to know how this is done uh, feel free to reach out and message me about it or, or leave a comment about what you want to see and uh I'll, I'll see if it's possible. If I have the skills to do it and make it happen, I'd love to do it. So until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And I hope you guys have a great day, evening, morning, uh, middle of the night, whenever it is that you're watching this. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.